I received this email titled DMCA Guardian Brief from monailpm1978 at gmail.hu. Allegedly system administration with the text, hey, I'm filing this notice on behalf of the copyright owner through the platform's reporting form. Authorized representative is Michael Travis. The work and its locations are listed in the form fields for this case. You can review the full report here with the rebrandly link, just a short link, like tinyurl or bit.ly or others similar. We believe in good faith that the use isn't permitted. I state under penalty of perjury that this notice is accurate and I'm authorized to act for the owner. Please promptly remove or disable access to the material and confirm once processed. No response needed. The case will be updated on the platform process within 96 hours. Okay, so this looks like a phishing email, right? This is pretty clear, not real, not legitimate, this is a complete scam. But the premise is kind of neat. So I thought, let's go take a look at what they're cooking up here. So I'm looking at this inside of Remnux, the reverse engineering malware Linux distribution, and I'm just gonna get a web browser open for us to take a look at this. Of course, we could be using a VPN, maybe we take a look at this through Tor, but this is our DMCA report at dmca-security.com. That is where the rebrand link took us for report 2716. Now, this actually looks kind of maybe convincing. They note the platform here is YouTube, probably trying to make some ploy that, oh, video content theft, I stole some material from LA Productions, apparently Michael Travis, apparently submitted over a month ago though, I am recording in November, high priority, and we have the report materials here that we could download, and then the application access to enter in our report ID. Looking at the footer here though, this is kind of funny. Copyright 2024, we can go take a look at the very top of the page. There were other pages here. DMCA guard, I don't know if you saw that for a quick second, and then switches to DMCA security. Our services, professional DMCA takedown, fast processing, legal compliance, global coverage, track record of that. Submit report, search reports, learn more. Let's go ahead and try to submit a report. Just curious, what is here on this webpage? Is it kind of real? Is it legitimate? Searching reports, does that work? Part of me's thinking this is probably just some AI generated website that had a domain that they were able to go ahead and use. Can I just search for any of these? Okay, it found one, presumably. Looking for exactly my code, but can I just search for anything here? Does that have any results? What if we did one, 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 one? Nothing. Let's look for things separate from mine. Nothing above or below. I wanna keep poking at that, but let me go look at the other pages here. We have the about page that I think is everything we've kind of already seen, but a lot of this looks fake. Expert legal team, proven track record, 24 seven support. Nothing else here. What does the contact us page have? Uh, different email addresses for the domain. It's missing the hyphen between DMCA security. Phone number, obviously not real. Office address, obviously not real. <laughs> the phone number is so bad. I do wanna keep trying to search though. Let me look at the network tab as I search for something. Interesting, the response from the actual uh, code that I have does give us a worker Sri Lanka. Include some of the details for what would have been my specific report, allegedly. But I hadn't been able to get anything else coming back. We could brute force if we really wanted to, but I don't know if we care that much. I do want to try and submit a takedown request and see how this looks. Doesn't look like there is any sanitization in submitting these things. Select all this crap. No, it just doesn't alert. There was no network request. It never sent anything to the server. All fake. <laughs> Ooh, get API, got a config. I wonder if there's any stuff in the API we could look at. Interesting. If I were to send a message, what happens? Can I send a message? Oh, actually has some client side validation at the very least. And we could look at that if we wanted to. Yeah, does not submit anything. No requests coming through, just an alert. Is this entire website set up to fish me? Cause I'm not getting any other results. Looks like it is trying to log when someone views a report. Let's go ahead and download our report package and let's see what it really is and what it's doing. It will prepare a report package, collecting evidence and material. Oh, goes to download and then forces a download of an executable. Now I have downloaded this previously just to be able to take a look at it, but look at these network connection requests. It's going to get this from GitHub. <laughs> look at that, GitHub Bradley Shing Visibility Share. 
Curious what that might be, and then I download the actual file. So let's go see what their GitHub repository might be. Oh, here's our boy, Bradley Shing. <laughs> No activity in this public repository that was made three months ago with the only executable contributed with the commit message of one <laughs> from OpenX Media. Are there any other GitHub commits? No, just OpenX Media submitting that thing. Well, it looks like OpenX Media is another account with not a lot of other activity. Uh, and OpenX Media has, ooh, interesting, a fake partnership contract media content advertising 102424.zip. Hmm, should we look at that one too? I'm kind of curious. Anyway, we have this thing downloaded. We know it's gonna be malware. We know it's probably an info stealer. Let me move from my downloads folder that take down executable file and put it in the current directory for us to play with. What does it look like? Taking a quick look, it's just an executable file, right? Nothing fancy, no .NET assembly, nothing that we might be able to poke and play at. So I think we'll just opt for a quick and easy dynamic analysis. Maybe we run Detect It Easy, try and browse for this thing, see what it looks like. Visual Studio, couple overlays in there, but beefy file, 44 megs, right? Well, let's make this a quick video and do some dynamic analysis inside of a sandbox so we could see this thing in action. I think the fun for this video was really just seeing that website that they probably AI vibe coded to crap together something that looks legitimate and then got a whole domain and then had some functionality to sell the fish, to sell the lie. Any run is cooking up with a Windows virtual machine for us to play with. And it needs our report ID, which we knew was RPT271 for our case. And maybe some of the other access things were for a, another different kind of individual report, right? Oh, look, it needs a UAC. It needs a user account control. And I know the quality here is kind of shot, but loading video content. Uh-oh. Player error. Critical error. Dude, that looks so bad. That looks so fake. Establishing encrypted tunnel is what that is trying to say, if you can't see it. Verifying content signature. All of this is not real. I've hidden the any run uh, display of what's actually happening, but if we were to close out of this, <laughs> okay, it's done a lot of damage. So we've got PowerShell commands that are setting some exclusions to be able to run MSHTA, the Microsoft HTML application and engine, querying internet actually errors, checking if a key exists in the options directory. Ooh, options dictionary. It's looking for attack surface reduction rules. That's a little neat. Conhost, of course, is executing. They do this over and over and over again to be able to MSHTA. Oh, is there more to this? Is there just gonna be like HTA or JScript or Visual Basic Script that we might be able to carve out? Trying to add more exclusions to be able to run out of the directory. More exclusions, more exclusions, more exclusions. This is dumb. And these are setting antivirus exclusions, right? Ooh, interesting fake directory that gets made with index.exe. And that's gonna end up running ASP.NET WP.exe. And that is the Radamanthus info stealer malware. Oh, and Lumba, potentially. But any run has already been able to carve out and extract the config and a lot of the dump of the material here, right? Okay, so it's tracking the IP address that the C2 would call back to along with the endpoint. And that's that. More info stealer crap, whatever. Which of these connections are made that actually try to reach something? Takedown does go to somewhere and send some traffic, but that's all over HTTPS, so not important. Wait, did that have a domain? National competition arise 00.org. What do you look like? <laughs> Just the Apache 2 default install page on Ubuntu? Okay. <laughs> and then ASP.NET underscore WP is making communications to whatever that is, whatever that IP address is, waiting for data. Yeah, so there's nothing coming back. Okay, whatever, info stealer malware. Do you think we could try to carve out any of those strings, like the PowerShell exclusion commands or the HTA, if it were to run like JScript or Visual Basic Script? We could try to use Floss, uh, maybe Binwalk or Foremost if we really wanted to. Let me Foremost on our takedown binary, ah. Oh, Floss is gonna give up. We could try to give this to like dbloat. It did say it had overlays. What would Foremost carve up? Anything? TD output. Ooh, that is stuff. There's a DLL, there's some HTML, there's an image, and that's just the icon that we saw. 
Okay. What does the HTML give us? Oh, wait. Is that the HTA itself with a lot of garbage in it? What is that? Um, okay. I'm pretty sure it's just junk. At least at like first glance, none of this looks like actual code and just horrible nonsense to bloat up the binary. That is pretty hysterical though. <laughs> This whole thing is kind of hysterical. Like the fact that they made this stinking website and it just funnels back to GitHub. Maybe RPT was not the right. I, I was just going off of report, but maybe there are some ABC ones that we could search for if there even are, if this is like actually used in multiple campaigns. This all looks fake though. This all looks AI generated and the most chat GPT fish that I could see. Oh, wait a second. I want to look at the files that are dropped here. And this is actually kind of interesting because uh, if you're using any run, the only important checkbox will show you just a couple of the files that are dropped. But if you wanted to see absolutely everything, unchecking only important and then trying to get to when this would have detonated. Cause I think a couple of this is like any run boilerplate stuff. And one of these is an XML file for a task, like a scheduled task in Windows for a little bit of persistence, right? Because scheduled tasks in Windows are all just XML behind the scenes. So we could see the interval, when this would run, when it fires, when it starts up, and then the actual command and executable. Uh, and it's using MSHTA to go to msteamping4.com ad launcher content. And that is neat. Can I see what that might be? Oh, automatically downloads an HTA file. So... Let me look at that ad launcher.ht. Okay, we got maybe a little bit more to do. Dude, do we really want to? Do I really want to? Look at this. <laughs> oh my Lord. This is clearly their persistence mechanism though, because this was set up as a scheduled task and this is like obfuscated to hell, random file names. Ooh. Maybe some shortcuts getting made there. We, we could make sense of some of the syntax right for the methods and modules and functions and libraries and things that are called that are just native to the language. But okay, sure, yeah, we found our HTA file. <laughs> this is pretty clearly malicious code, but look, we could just give this to old chat GPT and see what it does. Is there anything else interesting in the any run output? Not really. There is a little bit of a neat thing though, because this required you to type in the report ID, then it's like a key to unlock the malware actually executing. So in its own right, that is an antivirus evasion or anti-evasion little thing where it would have to follow along for the fish. You'd have to fall for the social engineering to end up having the malware execute. So it on its own, like this binary just being thrown into a sandbox, isn't gonna end up detonating. So let's try and upload the HTA file and see what it does. I have added the .nerf file extension just so I never accidentally click on it on my own. But if I tell any run, don't change the extension, I can do that manually and then I will invoke it myself uh, just to have it detonate and run in the sandbox. Yep, it doesn't need to be opened as .nerf. It does need to be opened as a one, two, three, four, five, removing that, a .hta file, which if I were to double click and have msdhta execute, what do we got going on? Mm, couple more threats, query and registry. That's it? That's all it did? The process already ended? Wait, MS team ping eight, seven, nine, 10? Is it doing some like neato domain generation? Not to say domain generation, but like, yeah, it's trying to get stuff. msteamping8.com, other calls from there, and 10, 9, 7, and others that all funnel back to this IP address. The ones that are online are harkening back to this IP address. Does that live? Oh yeah, some Cloudflare tunnel. Does not like direct IP address. So let's use the actual mspingteam8.com. Was that the name of it? Uh, other way around, msteamping8.com. Suspected phishing, yep, 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 yep. I know it is phishing. Real captcha, ignore and proceed, dead. 
Hey, sorry, John from the future here, different day, different shirt. Uh, I had recorded this video yesterday when I first got the phishing email, but later, after that, I had seen there was some chatter over on Twitter. So big shout out, big kudos, credit where credit is due. Uh, my buddy Tanner, he is a friend and fellow over at Huntress where I work, working with me there. He's at the security operations center, so I don't get to chat with him as much as I'd like to. But he caught wind of this and started to do some hunting on Validin to see what else might be out and about. And he had some interesting findings. So we could follow in his footsteps. I'm over here at app.validin.com and we could straight up search for the domain we've been working with DMCA-security and taking a look at this, we could track down some of the other relationships. They have a ton of cool insight here uh, with recent OSINT reports, other websites that might have been chatting about this, how it resolves over DNS, and that clues us into a couple of the IP addresses and the historic data as to when they might have been associated with this. One that sticks out is kind of the earliest one that resolves, and I think Tanner was tracking, this 101.99.92.246. So clicking on that IP address to pivot off of that, we can get similar data, but the resolutions here are really interesting because it clues us in to some other potential domain names that this has been using. DMCA Hub, DMCA Shield, DMCA Abuse.video, DMCA Guardian, blah, 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 blah. Takedownsecurity.com, takedownglobal.media. I don't know what some of the others are, but these are obviously a, a couple years delta, 2023, when now the 2025 campaign looks to be what is up and at them. These are the same domains that Tanner was tracking, he had seen, so we're just retracing his work here. Again, all credit to him. But he had found something a little bit neat and uh, worthwhile including here. When he pivots to Shodan, and we could use Shodan or Census or many of the others, we could see some of the other ports that are open across any of the different domains that we might have seen here. And he catches their entire server.js file, like the backend code, may very well be visible. So here is the funniest thing. If I search for that IP within census, I'll use that one here. A couple of the ports that they mention, of course, port 80 and 443, but they were also tracking 3001. And it looks like a lot of these different variants, maybe some of the other hosted domains, or if there are other instances, would use some 3001, 3002, 3003, up to like 3009. He saw one on 3000. 2009, and if we keep falling down the rabbit hole for a couple others, we could probably see similar. But let's see if we could track down the server.js file just as well and see that backend code. This is hysterical. Going to 3001 gives you like a completely different landing page. And this like looks a little bit better. Still AI slop, right? But this looks a heck of a lot better than whatever we saw originally on DMCA-security-hub-guardian-guard. It still has bogus like contact us details details, but uh, has the correct copyright at the very least. <laughs> and this is the funniest thing, right? Slash server.js is just outright exposed. <laughs> So this is the backend actual Node.js Express application that is serving this scam and fish, at least the landing page here. So let me go take a look at this in the source code. This is where all of our suspicions about some stupid, horrible, dumb AI vibe coded thing really is just about confirmed. Take a look at some of the syntax here, obviously a whole lot of comments and the explanation of how to use all this stuff. This is atrociously evident and clearly some crapped out chat GPT cursor, whatever, uh, syntax. We might be able to track down. Oh, <laughs> okay. Sorry, squirrel. Uh, we could see maybe some of the different report IDs here. R should have been included, right? RPT 2716. So I had the right hunch that it would probably be prefixed with RPT for report, not just some, any other random letters. And they are, of course, funneling a lot of this to Telegram. So any of the interactions, probably even what we were fumbling with, it would go ahead and send that along so they could track it. I won't drag us down the entire rabbit hole here, but I thought that was kind of neat to be able to pull back the curtain, see even some of the behind the scenes and shout out some of the sweet work that others in the community are up to and some of the other cool tools that they would be using. Look at this, send Telegram notification. Digging it, I love uh, some of those. Anyway, this is that send Telegram notification function, which 
It has that, I suppose. <laughs> it just echoes out everything with console.log and then uh, funnels it over. Uh, I don't think we'd be able to see the Telegram link in this case, but that was silly and fun. All right, that's all I wanted to fumble around with. Don't fall for phishing emails with fake DMCA security takedowns from Gmail addresses with misspoken websites uh, and AI-generated content, clearly. <laughs> bad details on their contact page if you were to try and vet that. This just reeks and is hysterically bad. DMCA guard as it comes back and forth. Thanks for watching. See you later. Goodbye.